Hello and thanks for joining today. One of the most difficult tasks of wildlife photography is acquiring focus of birds in flight. And in general, the smaller the bird, the more difficult it can be to acquire focus, especially in flight. But by improving your camera settings for autofocus and your focusing techniques, you will improve your chances of getting more in focus shots. In this video, I'll show you my settings and how I use them for bird and flight photography. As a disclaimer, I don't consider myself an expert at songbird photography, but I do like to photograph them because of their beauty and for the challenge. Also, when I do photograph them in flight, I do like a little bit, bit of motion blur to capture the sense of movement. Also, please comment below if you have additional tips to share. I have covered my complete camera settings for wildlife photography in a previous video, and I'll insert a link in the description. I received a question on how best to use those settings when photographing small birds in flight. So let's dive a little bit deeper. First, a quick refresher for reference. I use a Sony A1, so your camera's nomenclature may be different. I use continuous autofocus mode, and I currently am using small spot, zone, and variable small focus areas. I have a custom button assigned to scroll through and select the desired focus area. I use the same focus areas for tracking and for non-tracking. And then I use back button focus for non-tracking and another back button for tracking. As I stated before, more focus areas are available, but I have down selected to these for my use. Now let's talk about birds in flight. For birds in flight, I almost always use tracking focus areas. For larger birds, such as raptors, I use zone focus area when there is a single bird or when there are multiple birds uh, being present, but I don't care which one the camera focuses on. This gives me a wider focus area to acquire the target, and once acquired, the target will be tracked. This is obviously easier with a larger bird such as a raptor because of the size of the bird as well as the flight speed and pattern of the bird. For smaller birds, such as songbirds, acquiring focus is usually more difficult for several reasons. Songbirds typically don't fly in the open at a low enough height that you can photograph them. They are fast and less predictable in their flight patterns. The opportunities to photograph them in flight is usually very short as they fly from perch to perch often obstructed by branches. This means that you will need to be more patient and have your setup dialed in in anticipation of the shot. So you must be prepared for the shot in advance. Have your shutter speed adjusted for your artistic intent, i.e. if you want to freeze the faster movement, one over 3,000 second, for example. If you want wing blur, slow down the shutter speed a little bit. Pre-focus on the area that you intend to capture the shot. And when photographing them flying from perch to perch, use a tracking focus area and be pre-locked and ready for flight. You need to be prepared for what direction the bird will take off. For the case when you want to photograph the bird landing on a perch, you will need to be pre-focused on the perch to make the focus faster once the bird approaches that perch. And obviously know about where the bird will land. Many photographers will set up perches, perhaps even seeding the area to bring the birds in and to improve the chances of getting the shot, or even photograph at or near bird feeders. I choose not to photograph with these techniques, though I admit I don't get nearly the quantity or quality of good photographs of songbirds in flight as they do. In summary, be patient and be ready. Once you find a location that the birds are perching and feeding, sit still, Watch their flight patterns and where they perch. Get set up to photograph them where they are or where you predict they will be. If you can, pre-focus on an area that you expect to grab focus on the subject. For example, if there's a perch that they are landing on often, pre-focus on that perch and be ready. This will allow the camera to acquire focus on the target once activated when the bird does land on that perch. Have your camera settings dialed in before the action begins. A few other tips. 
Let's say that you have a background that you desire for a bird in flight and you want to capture that bird as it flies through that area. Then you will be waiting in that area, pre-focus on the background or something that uh, is representative of where you believe the bird fl will fly through and then acquire focus on the target once it is in that area. Another tip, open up your aperture a stop or two to give you a uh, larger depth of field and a better chance of acquiring focus on the target. You'll lose some of the background bokeh, but it may be a good trade-off for you. It can be hard to find the target in your lens if you are fully zoomed in. So you may find it easier to first zoom out, find the target in your lens, and then while you are acquiring focus, zoom in. The higher the frame rate, the better. Capture as many images as possible. 20 frames per second or greater is ideal. Some call this spray and pray, and you may spend more time deleting shots when you're culling your images at home, but you will have a much greater chance of getting the shot. Also, have your camera on a monopod or tripod. The time it takes to lift your camera from your hip to your eye is often too long and you will miss the shot. And most importantly, practice your technique. And the more you know about the birds you are photographing, the better the chances you will be prepared. I hope these tips were helpful. If so, please consider liking and subscribing to help this channel out. And if you have any further questions or suggestions, please leave a comment below. Enjoy your day. Get outside.